Hello, so um, this is Anne live from Augustana College, and this is WOG.FM Radioactive. Um, and I'm here with another episode of the College Mindset Podcast. And today we're going to dive into talking a little bit about what I call the freshman mindset. Uh, I just wanted to start off and give some credit to another co- podcast producer I listen to super often. She's been extremely helpful and has really added a lot to this, um, you know, the literature of mindset and mindfulness. Um, and that's Cara Lowenthal. Uh, she came out with an episode about a year ago called The Beginner's Mindset, which really did resonate with me and my upbringing here at Augustina at a liberal arts school. Um, again, if you're interested in learning more about uh, Cara, I highly recommend her podcast. It's called Unfuck Your Brain, and it dives into feminist theory and talking about mindfulness to basically unclutter (laughs) your brain and um, take control over what may seem uncontrollable. So that's that's kind of my way of looking at it. Anyway, I came up with this idea, or really just a different spin on her um, beginner's mindset after after the week I've had with my mentees talking to them about how their year's going, how their studies are, and uh, it ju- just if they're feeling overwhelmed, basically, how's our life here at Augustana? <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> uh, one of the duties as a peer mentor is to do a check-in and see how their year's going and how I can be of service to them to help them out. So after I had finished all 17 or so meetings, <laughs> I had noticed one thing that almost every person had in common. And that was the overwhelm that they had their first week adjusting to classes. Again, which is pretty normal. I had expected this already. But I, you know, it kind of sparked this idea of the freshman mindset. Um, and I'm going to dive into that a little bit. So this, of course, what I just gave was kind of a broad description of, but I really want to dive into some thoughts and that were discussed, which, you know, I had had coming into freshman year too that I forgot about, and that was having a advanced mindset. That is something I had coming into college. I thought I basically knew what I was doing or kind of had a grasp on what I was doing. You know, I knew I was gonna fail. <laughs> I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna fail out of college, so. Um, There might be another official term for this, but again, this is just something I made up based on on the scenario. Um, So, you know, just keep that in mind. I I did not look up if advanced mindset is a legit term. I'm just using it, uh, using this, using this uh, for this. So, um, so basically, what do I mean by advanced mindset? What I mean is advanced mindset is coming into college or an academic institution or or really anything it could be anything but in this let's, this context let's say Augustana you're coming into Augustana and you fully believe that you know or understand a particular subject well or well enough and are unwilling to see you know x subject in an open-minded and unbiased way so for example Let's say you walked into pre-calc. Um, it's, this happened to me. I, I took pre-calc here, walked in, and uh, let's say you're like, yeah, this is gonna be a breeze. I won't, I won't ever have to maybe be in the class. I don't have to show up because I took four years of advanced math in high school. I'm going to be top of the class, barely have to try, all that good stuff and we've <laughs> we've all seen that one person and know or know that one person who is the confident one um the one in class that you know thinks they they know it um consciously or unconsciously they're like yeah this will be all right maybe you're that person that's all right um you know you, you could be that person that thinks you know i I think I got a good grasp on this. Um, you know, if I know something, I don't have to try as hard. I already learned it. Why relearn it? So, 
so yeah and again i use math as an example because math is the subject that we that we kind of put on a pedestal of being unchanging and has unchanging rules so once you learn it you don't have to learn it again i mean if you do you don't have to rethink it it's the same thing right so <laughs> so i want you to imagine for a second if you were a freshman walking into pre-calc Imagine if you are ready and excited to relearn pre-calculus, knowing and expecting that this professor that you're, you're going to have, that what they have to offer and teach, that same concept you've already learned, but knowing that they were gonna, going to completely teach it in a new way that will help you in the long run. All right. So just think about that for a second. If you were to go into a class knowing that they were going to teach something differently and that it wouldn't be the same and willing to relearn something that you thought you already knew. Um, a second example that I was thinking about today because this is this is uh, this was in a podcast I was I was thinking about and I've been reading through some articles about this. Um, so a second example is the fat liberation movement and body positivity movement which again if you visit my instagram page you'll learn more about that and you'll know i am extremely passionate about learning about you know diet culture and how basically effed up our society is not only that um it's been completely whitewashed and in an article that was published a few weeks ago i read recently by um and i apologize for the pronunciation but marquilas mercedes she she talked about how female dietitians have helped steal and monetize the body positive movement which um which has really a whole way, new way of looking at the body positive movement um but yeah she talks about how female dietitians have helped steal and monetize the body positive movement um and again this is a movement i was i was never taught and you know i didn't learn this growing up uh, this is something that this was a whole new concept um and again i i'm extremely passionate about this so to, to read this article and to see this in a completely different light was almost kind of breathtaking um again this because i'm i try to approach things in a in curious way um so this was kind of mind-blowing for me because I hadn't known about this. I was blown away and w at trying to grasp this new way of viewing body positivity, which again, I think this helps in everyday life, whether you're a college student or not. This is something that we've grown up with because, you know, <laughs> we, we try, we work out, we try to eat healthy, we think that's good for us, and we don't really know why, you know, if what the positivity is where did this come from so um so yeah viewing body body positivity i never knew existed all right so a third example which again if you listen to my earlier episode i am a cello performance major so i'm going to apply this method to to my cello method teaching so all right so this is the third example i could be playing my cello and my teacher may be like all right, what if you bowed a down bow? Which again, if you don't know, if you're playing cello, you have a bow in your hand. And if you bow to the right, that's a down bow. Um, so what if you bowed your down bow, but used your shoulder to drive the up bow? This is something that I was taught and this is something I was totally new, what, completely new. And keep in mind, I've been playing cello for 14 years and I've bowed millions of down bows in my entire life. So you'd think I would know how to bow a down bow, um, but that's that's not true. That's not the case. <laughs> it's, it's the same concept. I'm bowing a down bow, but it's a completely new way of thinking about it. All right. So it's a completely new way of thinking that it's completely changed everything. It changed how my shoulder was feeling, the sound quality I was getting. It changed everything. It was I, and in that moment, I kind of realized, and it, again, so many moments leading up to that, that's just one, um, it, and knowing that it's so crucial to show up mentally, knowing that what we have learned, we will relearn, and that itself would open up new ways of thinking and believing, 
And again, I'm not saying to, I'm not saying at all to automatically change your values and your morals as a person, but learning and being conscious of a new way of thinking. And that is something that um, I think is one of the roots of liberal arts thinking because we're able to incorporate so many subjects into into our life um, and having to learn, or really just having to learn all these perspectives, um, just thinking about that now, it's learning all these perspectives and engaging them in a way that focuses on what your main focus is, what your major is, all that benefits you and who you are as an academic. So, um, Speaking of that, I again, I believe that this is one of the roots of liberal arts education is constantly showing up with a freshman mindset, a fresh mindset, a new mindset, as though this is a subject you've never seen before or you are ready to approach it from another perspective, from a different lens. We're so eager to get good grades on concepts that we think we already know just to give ourselves a pat on the back to boost our ego. Um, but, <laughs> but breaking news, we don't, I'm sorry, but we don't pay 56 grand or more for an institution to test us on things we already know um, or think that we know. <laughs> shocking. I was <laughs> shocking. I know. I, I told this to my, my mentees and they're like, oh, good to know. <laughs> so I just like seeing the, their face. They're like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> um, but again, this is something that um, this was hard to discuss. It's a hard discussion. This is that, you know, it's that it's normal and that should be normalized to not get an A on an exam or quiz that we thought we already knew. We think we need to know everything and that itself just causes this perfectionist thinking and anxiety and unrealistic ideals. Um, thinking that we need to know something to you know, that that's going to make us a better student, a better person. Um, and again, I had a philosophy professor, um, Deke Gould, uh, he, he told our class exactly that, and he was right. I couldn't really argue with him freshman year when he told us that. He said, if you're, if you're taking a class that doesn't really challenge you and your thoughts, just drop it. You're wasting your money. And again, I think, I think every class here does a very fine job at that. Um, but I really want the first years and transfer students to know that it's best to approach every subject with a fresh start and uh, in this freshman freshman mindset to be curious instead of certain. All right, and I'll, I'll read that again because I think this is really important. It is so, so important to be curious instead of certain coming in as a freshman, as a sophomore, a junior, a senior, a professor, anyone. Um, it's so important to be curious instead of certain. This is two-sided, all right? Um, certainty is comfort, but curiosity promotes growth and inclusivity to the world around us. It's safe and comforting knowing that we already know something. Our brains don't really want to spend that extra energy to relearn or change our thoughts on a subject but I urge you to challenge that and apply it. Apply it to the pandemic, to relationships, to protests, to people's opinions, class subjects, athletics, or even your career path. It could be anything, etc. cetera. Um, but just imagine what if we were curious instead of certain? Think of what that path would look like for you in your life. All right, so. So, all right, this is the end of today's talk. Um, I was very eager to talk about this. I, I really like diving into this subject and gives a little bit about me too and, you know, what I'm thinking and hopefully you can apply it to your life. Uh, so, uh, this is the end of today's talk and I'll talk more about scheduling for next week and thinking about how we're time managing, which is something that I know a lot of college students, if not all college students and even professors, uh, would benefit by hearing this. So next week, we're going to have a guest come in. Her name's Yen Dao. So stay tuned for next week's podcast. It will be at 1 p.m. next Thursday. So yeah. All right. So this was, uh, this is WOG.FM, Radioactive. I will talk to you next week. Bye.